All right, welcome back everybody. And today we're going to be deriving the formula for the residues at higher order poles. So let's suppose we have our function f of z right here, which can be expressed in terms of its Laurent series. If we have a pole of order n, that means the highest term on our principal part is, well, n. So this principal part on our Laurent series only has finitely many terms. And if you've watched my previous two videos on simple poles and Cauchy's residue theorem, you will know that if we want to find the residue, at z equals to zk on our function f of z, then that's just defined to be this coefficient b evaluated at j equals 1. So we have the coefficient b sub 1k like so. And this is the thing we want to recover. So our goal as always with these residues is to recover the b sub 1k coefficient. And in the case where we have an nth order pole, it's a little bit tricky to do that because we have a lot of um, stuff to deal with on the principal part. But let's just go ahead and, and get started with this. So if you've watched my previous video, we've discussed how if we let z equals to zk on our analytic part right here, we're going to get a zero, which means if we plug z equals to zk into our function, this whole analytic part will be zero. But the problem is we're going to have zero on the denominator right here because well we have negative powers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rewrite this just to make things a little bit easier to explain so i've rewritten it out the principal part a little bit i've just listed a couple of terms and this term right here that's the very last term the b sub nk term because we have an nth order pole so remember we want to let z be equal to z sub k but we have these issues right here where we're going to generate zeros on the denominator so for the case of simple poles our method was just to multiply everything by the factor z minus zk. And that at least, it's going to kind of isolate this b sub 1k coefficient, which we want to recover. But for higher order poles, even if we multiply by this factor, we're still going to end up with zeros on the denominator right here. Because well, this two is just going to turn into one and this n is going to turn into n minus one, all of which will generate zeros on the denominator. So instead of just multiplying everything by z minus zk, we're going to multiply every by this factor with the highest power right here which is z minus zk to the nth power and if we do that we're going to find that z minus zk to the nth power of f of z is equal to now we have the sum running from j equals 0 to infinity of a sub j k and now since we're multiplying everything through by z minus zk to the nth power we're going to add an n to this j so we're going to have z minus zk to the j plus n. And notice one thing, n is a positive number and j is always a positive number, which means j plus n is always a positive number, which means that if we plug z sub k into here, we're not going to divide anything by zero, so it's all good there. And on the principal part, we're going to get b sub 1k multiplied by z minus zk to the nth power, but we also have this z minus zk on the denominator, so we're just going to subtract one from the exponent. And then as for these other terms right here, we're going to have b sub 2k to the z minus zk to the n minus 2 plus dot dot dot. And then we're going to have plus. And now since we multiplied everything through by z minus zk to the nth, it's going to cancel out with its denominator right here, leaving us with a b sub n k. And remember this b sub 1k coefficient is still what we want to recover. And if we plug z sub ck into all of these right here, well, on the analytic part, we're going to get a zero. But here, we're also going to get a zero. We're going to get a zero here. And we're going to end up with a b sub nk. But we don't want that b sub nk. We want the b sub 1k. So the question is now, we've gotten rid of the problem with zeros appearing on the denominator. How can we now further isolate this in b sub 1k? Well, if you remember back to Taylor series, when we wanted to find the general formula for each of those Taylor coefficients, what we did was we differentiated things a bunch of times in order to get rid of these power terms right here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to differentiate everything n minus one times. And why exactly n minus one? Well, it's because that's the power we have up here. Because if we have x cubed, for example, if we differentiate this thing three times, then we're going to get three x squared, then six x plus six. And you see, once we differentiate three times, we're gonna get rid of this variable right here. So if we have 
a power of n minus 1. If we differentiate everything n minus 1 times, then we're going to get rid of this power term right here. And that's just going to leave us with, well, just our b sub 1 k times some kind of constant. And notice one cool thing when we do this right here, if we differentiate everything n minus 1 times, we're going to be left with b sub 1 k times some kinds of constant. But on these latter terms right here, we're actually going to get 0. Because these powers right here, n minus 2, n minus 3, all the way up to n minus n, all of those powers are less than n minus 1. And if we differentiate n minus 1 times on this term right here and get a constant at the front, then if we differentiate n minus 1 times on all these latter terms, we're going to get 0. It's just like if we used the previous example, if we had x cubed and we differentiate this thing 3 times, we're going to get some kind of constant. But if we triple differentiate a smaller power, let's say x squared, well then we're going to get 2x, then 2, then 0. So all the powers that are lower than n minus 1 are just going to disappear off and turn into 0. So let's go ahead and carry out that operation on both sides. If we differentiate this thing n minus 1 times, so dn minus 1, dz n minus 1, of z minus dk to the nth power times f of z, then that's going to be equal to we're going to have the derivative of the sum right here, but we can interchange those two operators. So we're going to have the sum running from j equals 0 to infinity of a sub j k. Then we're going to have the n minus 1 derivative of z minus z k to the j plus n. And then we're going to have plus the nth derivative, n minus 1 derivative on this term right here. So we have b sub 1 k of z minus zk to the n minus 1. And we don't even have to worry about all these other terms because they're going to disappear off to 0 anyways. So now what do we have right here? Right here on the analytic part, we're going to differentiate this thing a bunch of times. And notice if we differentiate this thing a bunch of times, then we're just going to be left with z minus zk to some power, let's call it p, times some kind of coefficient out the front because we're going to bring this power down a bunch of times and whatnot. And this p right here, that's always going to be positive because if we differentiate this thing right here n minus 1 times, then we're going to reduce this power by n minus 1. So we're going to have something like j plus n minus n minus 1, which is just going to give us what well, these are going to cancel out, leaving us with the j plus 1. j plus 1 is always positive, which means our power right here is always positive. And of course, we're going to have this constant at the front, which will be some kind of combination of factorials and whatnot. So in fact, let's just do a replacement right there. We don't really care what c is. We don't really care what, what p is, as long as p is constant. So this is going to give us a c times, times z minus zk to the p. And how about over here on the principal part? Well, if we differentiate this thing n minus 1 times, then we're going to bring this power down n minus 1 times. And each time we're going to be reducing the power by 1. So in fact, we're going to get n minus 1 factorial out the front right here. So this whole term right here becomes n minus 1 factorial times b sub 1k and this power factor right here that's going to well that's going to disappear because we're differentiating a power of n minus 1 n minus 1 times so what did we just find out right here if we take the nth the n minus 1 derivative on z minus zk to the nth power of f of z that's going to give us the sum running from j equals 0 to infinity of a sub jk times some constant times z minus zk to the pth power plus n minus 1 factorial times the b sub 1k. And you see, there's our residue right there. That, there's our b sub 1k that we want to recover. So we've done quite a bit of work so far. Now all we need, really need to do is get rid of this analytic part. And we can do that quite easily by taking the limit as our z approaches zk in order to generate a zero right here. So now if we take the limit on both sides, we're going to have the limit as z approaches zk of the n minus 1 derivative of z minus zk to the nth power times f of z. That's going to be equal to the limit as z approaches zk on this thing right here, but that's going to give us a 0. So all that we're really left with is n minus 1 factorial b sub 1k. And all that's really left to do is to isolate this b sub 1k by dividing both sides by n minus 1 factorial. And remember, this thing right here, that's our residue we wanted to find out. So the residue at z equals to zk 
of our f of z, that's equal to 1 over n minus 1 factorial times the limit as z approaches zk on the n minus 1 derivative of z minus zk to the n times f of z. And that is the formula to find the residue of an nth order pole. So this formula only applies to finite order poles. I don't think there is a general formula for essential singularities. You will just have to use the Laurent series expansion for your function and recover the b sub 1k term that way. And even for higher order poles, like a pole of order five, you probably don't want to use this formula because you don't want to be differentiating things four times. So in most cases for higher order poles and essential singularities, it's probably the best option to get your residue directly from the Laurent series expansion. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see everybody later. Bye bye.